Hello and welcome to Battle Cruiser Trucking, my wonderful new YouTube channel where I'm going to be discussing my life as an owner operator of a semi truck, some things I've learned, some stories I have to share, things I'm still learning as time is going on. I've only been an owner operator since uh, this past December of 2020, so I closed out everyone's favorite year by starting a business and becoming uh, a sole proprietor, and now I have an LLC called Battle Cruiser Trucking. I'm going to talk briefly about why I chose the name uh, Battle Cruiser. First of all, it sounds cool. I figure you got to have fun somehow in business and in trucking. You see some wild names on the road every now and again, but the most common thing to do is a lot of guys, they'll just put their name on the side of the truck or their initials on the side of the truck or whatever the case may be. Now, at present, I am leased on with another carrier, so it's their information on the side of the truck as opposed to mine. But at some point in the future, I am giving very serious thought to be getting to getting my own authority and being able to operate um, as a, my own uh, entity entirely by getting a USDOT uh, number. But for the time being, because I'm still so new to being an owner operator, I'm playing it more or less safe uh, by being leased on with another carrier, operating under their authority. Um, and as I learn more, either I will strike out on my own entirely or if these guys end up that i'm working with now end up being the best scenario i'm going to stay with them um because right now things are pretty good i mean it could be better it could be worse uh, i am not leased on with landstar i know they are one of the more popular uh, owner operator outfits to be affiliated with i am with a much smaller company um that uh, i'll again talk about later on but uh, why i chose the name battle cruiser first of all it sounds cool as i just said second of all it does kind of tie in with uh, the truck that i own i own a 2017 kenworth t680 uh, with a packard mx13 motor and uh, i call it the battle cruiser to ever well more accurately i came up with the name i arrived at the decision to use that name uh First, again, because it sounds cool, and second of all, because I have, in the last uh, six months to a year, before, you know, as I was researching becoming an owner operator and what trucks to buy, uh, I, even though I drove a Freightliner Cascadia, a 2019 new body style Freightliner Cascadia for about 14 months for Werner Enterprises when I was a company driver for them, uh, my very first truck with Werner Enterprises. Uh, was a 16 Kenworth T680 that had the Cummins uh, power plant in it, 15 liter Cummins engine. Uh, the Packard MX-13 is the 13 liter, well technically 12.9, but 13, whatever, uh, engine. And I do like the engine a lot. Uh, I think that this truck does perform better than the Cummins power plant uh, system that I was driving for Werner for a couple months before they transitioned me out of that truck and into the Freightliner I drove for over a year. Uh, so the Battle Cruiser part of the name and why I chose it refers to um, the power, but also the limitations that the T680, in my experience, has. Uh, the T680, for those of you who have absolutely no experience as a truck driver whatsoever, uh, or have only ever driven Freightliners or Volvos, um, these trucks, they are, they are very good trucks, and you see them a lot on the road, a lot of fleets operate them on Moss, uh, very popular trucks, especially uh, on the second-hand market and the resale market, uh, because they are, if they're well taken care of, they are very reliable. They are usually uh, pretty powerful, pretty well set up, and they're pretty flexible what they can do. However, one thing they do not do very well is they do not corner nearly as well as the Freightliner Cascadia or the Volvo, at least not in my experience. Now, my Freightliner that I drove uh, for Werner for 14 months. By comparison to the Kenworth I drove for them first and this Kenworth that I own now, that truck did corner and maneuver a lot more cleanly and more reliably uh, and more smoothly than this truck does. Uh, so I guess you're asking, you're wondering, why didn't you buy a Freightliner? Well, I'll talk about that later on as well. But this truck, in my opinion, does handle better than the first Kenworth I drove. And so the Battle Cruiser name does kind of tie in with this truck being flexible to a point, powerful to a point, 
but also there are some limitations with its engine transmission combination and of course the cornering and maneuverability. So that's kind of the second lesser reason why I chose the name Battle Cruiser Trucking. Um, first and foremost is the name sounded cool. I thought it would be fun. I thought it'd be funny. And again, you've got to have fun out here on the road somehow, some way. Um, and I, this is a great way to do it by choosing a name that's uh, unusual, sounds cool, um, and can also be a great way to have a good laugh at your own expense on purpose, uh, as well as you know, people remember a name that sounds as unusual as Battle Cruiser. So you know, that's another. Uh, reason I chose it that for certain customers you never know that may end up being oh yeah let's call that guy at Battle Cruiser he's, he's pretty reliable he knows what he's doing <laughs> we can trust him to get in there on time uh, so you know it's just, mostly it's fun it really doesn't have any purpose beyond it it's, it's just it's just fun so why not and, um, I didn't want to just put my initials or my name on the side of the door at some point I wanted to have a name that was going to be unusual that was going to look cool and if I wanted to ever get really crazy and uh, like paint up this truck or my next truck in like a digital camouflage pattern or get it wrapped with camouflage because why not uh, it would fit the name and then the skin or whatever I did to it would uh, it would all tie together so that's why I chose the name why I'm doing this channel I am not doing this channel to make money while I will appreciate any subscriptions that do come my way any likes or shares that come my way that is not my primary reason for making this channel my main reason for making this channel is to share my experiences to share what I've learned the easy way and also the hard way tell some stories good bad and ugly um, you know relay some things that maybe some truck drivers don't know about possibly uh, and also just be another flavor of voice out there for folks who are looking into becoming a truck driver, considering it, not sure what to do with their lives. They want to make money. They're not sure how they need, you know, different options. So this is going to be a channel that I hope will provide for those folks some information, different take on things, a different take on Werner Enterprises, because I will in future videos be doing a my opinion review of that company based on my experience um, and I hope that for those of you who are considering joining up with a mega carrier as a truck driver or a student driver or however it works out that uh, if you do want to go down that path that my review of Warner Enterprises is uh, informative uh, as for me my experience I haven't even been driving two years professionally yet I, my two-year anniversary will be coming up uh, middle of July so just a, a little over a month away will be my official two-year anniversary as a CDL A-class driver in the US of A uh, and I must be doing something right or at least somewhat intelligently to have gone from a company driver with no experience whatsoever in the truck driving industry to an owner operator after you know about 16 months as a company guy and you know late i've i've been an owner operator now for it's it'll be almost uh 6 months almost 7 months got the truck in december it's june so yeah almost 7 months as an owner operator um and doing well enough that i feel confident in making a youtube channel to share my experiences and stories and things of that nature so i hope uh those of you who are curious about it will uh, come along for the ride and in the uh, spirit of uh, the really great uh, YouTube channel, Smart Trucking, I will share a story um, from today, as a matter of fact. I was hauling a load of 45,600 pounds of kitty litter from uh, Virginia, clear ac across West Virginia, now here into Ohio, where I'm waiting to be unloaded uh, around Cincinnati. Uh, I was coming off of uh, Interstate 64, uh, where was I, yeah, I was coming off 64, getting onto US 35 headed north, and it's a little ways north of 64, just south of a little town called Pliny, Pliny, P-L-I-N-Y, uh, it's, a, it's a blink and miss little spot in the map, um, but it's in an area where West Virginia flattens out into arable farmland as opposed to being mountains like around Charleston or further east uh, towards Virginia itself. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm on 35 north at this point. I've just gotten off 64 a little ways previously and I'm headed towards Pliny. 
I uh, hope I'm pronouncing it right. If anyone from there is watching, I do apologize if I'm butchering the name. Forgive me. Um, and at an intersection, I think it was for State Route 817, somewhere in that range, um, a flatbed truck had had a mishap. He didn't roll over, but he had lost his load of plywood. It had scattered across the right turn lane and from that state route onto US 35. It didn't come into 35's lane, but they had some emergency crews there to kind of control traffic. Uh, no one got hurt, no cars were wrecked up, but you know, one of the recurring uh, jokes on the internet is that uh, with how things have been going in the post pandemic recovery, um, depending on how you look at it, Lumber prices have gone through the roof because of a wide variety of factors. The housing market is exploding and still exploding in the U.S. People are remodeling, they're refurbishing, they're taking out projects, they're doing all kinds of weird stuff. So lumber prices are through the roof because supply uh, right now cannot keep up with demand. And this guy had lost an entire load of plywood sheet. I think they were four by eight sheet. I think it was at least three quarter inch thick. So this was good, heavy, expensive uh, floor grade, uh, or maybe maybe even roof grade plywood. It was heavy stuff and he had lost the load <laughs> onto the road. I felt so bad for the guy. I couldn't tell if he was a company owner or operator, but I know he did not have a good day today and I felt so bad for him, but I was glad no one was hurt. He was okay, he didn't roll over, it just, I couldn't tell if a strap had failed um, or if he didn't have his load tightened down enough. I, I had to keep moving because they had traffic going north, still moving. I didn't want to hold anything up while I was rubbernecking around. That just wasn't going to help anything. So uh, uh, just motored on past slowly and safely, but still it's just sheets of plywood scattered all over the place. And I felt really bad for him. I always feel bad for drivers who had a mishap like that where a load is gone. Um, bit sideways on him in this case literally I always feel bad when I see a guy rolled over it's not fun to have that happen to anybody uh, so it's one of those things where it can be an object lesson to me and every other driver I do van work almost exclusively so I don't have to worry about loads all of a sudden just toppling off of a trailer but I do have to be concerned about loads shifting in my trailer even though I have low center of gravity kitty litter uh, it's very heavy very dense and very low in the trailer, uh, I still need to be aware of my center of gravity, how fast I'm taking corners and turns so that I don't myself decide to go oopsie. Because even with a low center of gravity load, if you get a bit too cocky, you can turn yourself over. Uh, so that gentleman's unfortunate mishap is a reminder to me to make sure that I'm always operating in a safe fashion, or at least as safe as possible depending on the conditions of the road and also the uh, condition of my own intelligence and whether or not I'm recognizing that I need to be safe or safer, as the case may be. Um, so that concludes uh, this opening video story. Um, again, I'm not here to make money on YouTube, uh, but I do appreciate any likes or shares or subscriptions you want to offer. And I do hope that my future content is content that you guys will enjoy, especially those of you who are veteran truck drivers looking to have a laugh at a newbie. Uh, and to see if I say anything crazy, I hope to make you guys proud and give you something to laugh at. And for you guys who are looking, and gals, and whoever, whether you're androgynous or transgender or whoever, whatever you are, if you are considering a career as a truck driver or as something to pay the bills while you figure out what you want to do with your life, I do hope that what I bring to the table is going to be a resource to you. I do intend to offer true valid information to the best of my ability and to give you my opinions as neutrally and as unequivocally as possible so you can take the information I present and make your own decision as opposed to this listening to some idiot on YouTube uh, with a funny name for a business decide you know, and decide based on that you know that one guy's influence that I'm gonna you know do this now you know it's like I don't want you to do that I want you to take what I'm telling you learn from it if there is a lesson in it for you personally and I want you to consider honestly what I'm saying and dispassionately what I'm saying uh, when it comes to lessons I'm trying to impart or things I'm trying to share story-wise or you know business related uh, things of that nature so that I hope uh, if truck driving is something that you do want to see in your future or you're considering it, whether it's um, over the road or straight truck or local or whatever the case may be, I hope what I bring to the table, what I record, uh, will be of use to you. So if you, uh, again, 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming on this adventure with me. I hope that uh, the future is bright for all of us. And with that being said, I'll see you down the road, my friends. Take care.